politics the other day. We're joined by our Cavs blogger from uh, Nordonia High School. It's Darius Stefna here on WAKR. And Darius, uh, let's talk about the, this week that we've had with the Cavaliers. The uh, You're looking at, I mean, Colin Sexton ended up having a career night the other night, and they still just couldn't get it done. They couldn't keep, they had a nice lead against the Celtics, and they just couldn't keep it together. Hey, good morning, Tony. Thanks for having me. Yeah, that uh, loss on Wednesday night definitely was a tough one. But don't forget, these are the Boston Celtics who the night beforehand um, lost to the hands of the Nets and Karis LeVert, who just had a phenomenal night. So the Celtics definitely had something to prove, and unfortunately they had to prove it against the Cavs. Jason Tatum was fantastic in that game um, against the Celtics, Tony. Um, He finished with 32 points in 40 minutes to go along with nine nine rebounds and six assists. And you mentioned Colin Sexton, fantastic, career-high 41 points in 45 minutes. Um, He really did take uh, the lead in this game. Um, No one else had even, you know, 30. Kevin Love, the second-highest scorer with 26. But one stat that really stands out to me, Tony, is the number of turnovers the Cavs um, haven't been committing. We saw in the beginning of the season, you know, there was one point in a preseason game they were committing, you know, almost 28 turnovers. And um, it was just a complete mess with John Beeline. Now with J.B. Bickerstaff, you're seeing this turnover ratio a little bit more um, favorable for the Cavs. Um, Monday night against the Jazz, um, excuse me, the Cavs, only six turnovers compared to 15 for Utah. Um, In Wednesday's game against the Boston Celtics, Tony, only 12 turnovers for the Cavs. If you can limit yourself to, you know, almost 12 to 11 turnovers per game, you have a chance to make it competitive. And the Cavs, although they've lost all their games, they've lost their last four, they haven't been blown out by, you know, 30, 40 points. They've kept it competitive. They've kept the majority of it to single digits. It's just, you know, as the game winds down, you know, the big-time players step up. And on Wednesday night, it was Jason Tatum. Uh, uh- Cavaliers right now are 17 and 45 on the year. Uh, they've lost uh, their last 10. They're four and six. So you've seen a little bit of improvement. You've seen some growth. What do you expect out of JB Bickerstaff as he has taken over as the head coach and not just the interim head coach? He's the head coach of yeah. the Cavaliers right now for the foreseeable future. And what do you expect out of uh, JB? And what do you expect out of the out of the team? Because obviously they're the second worst team in basketball right now. Uh, you're looking at a nice lottery pick coming up in the draft in June, but uh, are, how much growth are you looking in terms, and does it necessarily mean wins and losses at this point? Well, I definitely do think that it means uh, wins and losses, Tony, but um, as you mentioned, when Beeline was discussing about leaving the Cavaliers, everyone uh, right away knew that J.B. Bickerstaff was the guy. The reason they knew this was because a lot of these Cavs players had relationships and were able to talk to J.B. Bickerstaff as their, he was almost like their advisor to them when Beeline was the head coach. Now with Beeline out, Bickerstaff has more of a voice. Therefore, and the Cavs, you know, these Cavs players know him well, so they're able to, you know, mesh with him and understand his tactics a little bit more. I definitely do think wins and losses matter still, although you're, you know, you are 17 and 45. What also matters, Tony, is the competition. And I mentioned um, just a couple minutes ago, the Cavs have been competitive, which is the main aspect. But they only have two games left at home tomorrow against the Nuggets and against the Spurs on Sunday. Then they go out for a six-game road trip, and they're playing some playoff teams. They're playing the Rockets, the Pacers. Um, they're playing the Magic as well on this current on this upcoming six game road trip so competition definitely does matter and let's not forget jb bickerstaff hasn't won on the road yet so with this six uh six game road trip coming up uh he definitely has a lot to prove Darius Stefan, our Cavs blogger he's also an nba guy uh too with us uh cavaliers by the way uh they are taking on the nuggets tomorrow night and uh, so uh, looking forward to that and seeing a team like uh of denver is kind of I mean, they're the third seed in the Western Conference. Uh, still a good team, but a kind of an overlooked team. And I want to get your thoughts, by the way, uh, going not just Cavs, but NBA-wise, is that when you talk about overlooked teams, I think the Nuggets and the Jazz have been two teams that I think a lot of teams, uh, a lot of NBA fans kind of overlook because they're quote-unquote boring teams. Like, they don't have the flashy player like a LeBron or a Kawhi Leonard. But the Milwaukee Bucks do in Giannis, yet... Even though the Milwaukee Bucks right now are 53 and 9 on the season, 53 and 9, it's unbelievable. Yet you don't hear much about this Milwaukee Bucks team. Why is that? Is it because of the market? 
are they not as flashy of a team as the Warriors had been the last couple of years and as a team like the Lakers and Clippers? I mean, what is it? Well, absolutely, Tony. You know, we obviously Milwaukee is similar to Cleveland in terms of their market. They're not huge markets. Um, the reason I'm not very um, – let's talk about Denver and Utah first. These are two excellent teams. They can definitely give the two L.A. teams – a handful in the playoffs. And don't forget, the Cavs actually went to Denver in Jan- early January and defeated the Nuggets 111-103. Um, but in terms of you know Utah, they have a stronger bench now with Jordan Clarkson. I really think that was a huge pickup for the Jazz. You've got guys like Donovan Mitchell. Rudy Gobert can dominate almost anyone in the paint. So this is a team I'm definitely keeping my eye on. In terms of Utah, these guys can shoot the basketball. You're talking about guys like Paul Millsap, Jamal Murray. These guys are veterans. They know um, the right way to play. Um, Mike Malone has done a fantastic job coaching that team. And again, they're going to give problems to anyone in the first round or even down, later down the road in the playoffs. Um, in terms of Milwaukee, Tony, I definitely think Giannis has had another career year, best year he's had. Um, he will most likely win MVP again, let's not doubt ourselves. But the reason I'm a little shaky on Milwaukee is the fact that once the Philadelphia 76ers are healthy and you have a healthy Joel Embiid, you've got someone in the paint to go up against Giannis. Um, I'm also looking at if the Bucks make it out of the Eastern Conference Finals, um, they're going to be having to take on most likely um, either the Lakers or the Clippers. And if they face the Clippers, um, you know what Kawhi Leonard would be able to do um, to Giannis Antetokounmpo. And the Bucks, the reason they're 53-9, and nine, Tony, is they run the ball so fast. I mean, they they lead the league in pace. Um, you know, they're consistently running up and down the court. And in the playoffs, the game slows down. And we saw that last year in the Eastern Conference Finals um, when Kawhi Leonard locked down Giannis Antetokounmpo and the Raptors won that series in six games to go to the finals. So, you know, what I'm looking forward to see is how can Milwaukee adjust to that playoff atmosphere, um, you know, once the games do start to slow down. Uh, Darius, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Ray will be back next week so you get a chance to talk to him. But, hey, thanks so much. Uh, and follow him on uh, Nordonia Sports on Twitter. Thanks, thanks, Darius. Thank you so much, Tony. All right.